Hey friends, welcome back. This is Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Soulard School. But here for Teaching in Room 9, I teach math for second graders. All right, friends, it's so great to be here with you again today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us and do some learning here together. I can't wait to jump right in. But first, we always start with our mindful minute. So um, as you guys know, this week, we have been focusing on doing some mindful breathing, slowing our body down so that we can be present in the moment. And I've been kind of walking us through the different zones of regulation. Or as we like to say at my school, we call them engine checks. So if you need to check your engine, it's just a time where you can kind of take that self inventory or that kind of check in with your own self. How am I feeling, thinking, what are some of the thoughts that I have um, running through my brain right now? And then once you are able to kind of identify and say how you are feeling, then you can really work on um, all these different strategies that we've been talking about together in order to recenter your body and make you feel more calm and ready to go. So um, we're gonna do some deep breaths. I'd like you to sit up nice and straight and tall. Loosen your shoulders and your neck. Any tension you might be feeling, we're gonna breathe in through our nose, counting to three, breathe out through our mouth, counting to three. All right, ready? Take a deep breath in. And then out. Breathe in through your nose. Out through your mouth. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. All right, keep taking those deep breaths in and out, friends, as you feel your chest rise and fall as it fills with air, and then you release all of that air. So keep taking those deep breaths. I'm gonna to talk to you about our last zone of regulation, which is called the red zone. So the red zone, that is, so we started with our blue zone on one side that's feeling really low energy, um, tired, uh, disappointed, down in the dumps. Then green, ready to learn, focused and calm. Yellow, where we're starting to feel kind of elevated. This might look like feeling frustrated or irritated or, um, a little bit higher energy, starting to feel really silly. And then we get to that opposite of the blue, the red zone. This can look like feeling really mad or angry. Might look like feeling mean. This might even look like I lost control or I need time and space. Maybe you feel like you might have lost your cool a little bit in that moment. It might even look like screaming yelling, hopefully not throwing things, but when we get so elevated to that red zone, it can be a little bit tricky. So if you're noticing that you are starting to feel in that red zone, some of the things that you might wanna do are take a moment, deep breaths. You might want to push against a wall, really pushing forward and letting all of that energy um, sort of push right into that wall, sort of helps to channel those feelings and um, hopefully kind of getting out some of that, that frustration that can help you to feel more recentered. Um, another thing is either stretching or doing yoga. So this really helps us to kind of loosen up our muscles, take some deep breaths together, and then hopefully then you can start, start to come down from that red zone and feeling a little bit more centered. Um, I had mentioned how in my calm down kit, I always have a notepad with pencils or crayons to draw or write about how you're feeling. Sometimes naming those feelings, getting some of that out onto paper helps to act as a sort of a release for those big red feelings. Um, sometimes just getting a quick drink of water, changing your scenery, getting out of that space, rehydrating is always so good for your body. So a quick drink of water might help you to feel more calm. Uh, looking at a sensory bottle, I've showed you some of my sensory bottles before, and that really helps us to focus on what's going on in the bottle, and then that can help us to sort of um, recenter that energy and sort of put it into a more calm and positive space. 
okay? Uh, looking in the mirror sometimes helps you to name some of these feelings you might be having. We talked about doing yoga, uh, wiggling on a cushion, either um, in the school setting or at home. You might just have a pillow that you kind of want to get some of those wiggles out. And then always taking these deep breaths here together. All right, friends, you did amazing. Thank you guys so much. I hope that kind of walking through these zones of regulation and um, how we kind of do engine checks at my school um, maybe helps you to feel like you can kind of name some of those feelings you might be having. And then hopefully it's giving you all these different strategies and tools for things that you can do when you start to feel a little bit dysregulated. All right, we're gonna jump into our learning goals for today. It says, I can understand place value of three digit numbers. We've been focusing on this for about two weeks now, really uh, decomposing or breaking apart uh, three digit numbers, understanding that they are made up of a hundreds, a tens, and a ones place, um, and all the different ways that we are able to uh, represent our three digit numbers, like in model form with base 10 blocks, uh, word form, using our HTO chart, all of those great things. And then once we were able to feel really confident in um, understanding place value of three digit numbers, we've been working on comparing two three digit numbers using greater than, less than, or equal to. All right, so that's what we are focusing on um, today as well. So you guys have been doing an amazing job. Um, I encourage you to, so when we get to this part here behind me, where we're kind of practicing going through those three, three digit numbers and breaking down and representing both of them, then we are able to decide what sign should go in the center here. Got our recess from last time. All right, so um, let's go ahead and look at our charts here, friends. So I'm gonna swing you guys around this way. We're gonna go over again our steps for comparing numbers. So we know that when we are comparing two numbers, uh, we are going to use these different symbols. We have um, that crooked L or that crooked L where it looks like an L that kind of got squished on its side. And I always, that helps me to remember that that crooked L left is less than. So I say, you say left is less than. Nice job. So we have left is less than, and then this one in the center that we all know. Ready? Equal means just the same. So we know that if we have that equal number, our numbers are the same on both sides, and we have that same value. Then we have right is greater than. So if our um, symbol is pointing to the right, we know that that means it is greater than. Left is less than, and then the right is greater than. And whenever we are comparing our three digit numbers, we are always gonna go through these three steps. So, first things first, start in the largest place. So if we're comparing two three digit numbers, we're gonna start in the largest place. What is the largest place? in a three digit number? Is it the hundreds, the tens, or the ones? Amazing, friends. You guys are incredible. You are absolutely right. It is the hundreds place. So you can see on this first one here, we looked at our hundreds place, but we noticed that they are the same digit and the same value. They both are an eight. So we have to go to that second step. Second step, if the numbers are equal, go to the next place. So that's what we had to do in this top one here. We saw the eights were equal, so we jumped to the next place. We looked at the four, which you can see is drawn out by uh, the four tens right here, which is 10, 20, 30, 40. And on this side, the six is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So which one is greater, the 40 value or the 60? Nice job, yeah, 60 is a greater value than 40. So 845 is less than, I can tell it's my less than sign because it's that crooked L, 862. And so then we went through that same process down here for 729 as well. You might be able to just look at it and understand and see that it is the same number on both sides. But if you go through that same process, you see the sevens are the same in that hundreds place. You see the twos are the same in that tens place. And then we get to our last digit, 
a nine in the ones place is the same on both sides. So equal means just the same. So these two numbers are of equal value. They are the same. And then we got down to this last one here, 543 and 368. So we always do first things first, start in the largest place. So we start in that largest place and we drew it out in model form here. So five in the hundreds place would be five different hundreds. Three in the hundreds place here would be three different hundreds. And so my eye already goes to the fact that this is bigger or there are more of these hundreds than on this side. And we know that 500 would be a greater value than 300. So we always go, once we've kind of taken our, our um, time to go through each step and compare the largest, then the next largest, then the next, then we get to step three, write your symbol to make the statement true. So we can see that 500 is greater than 300. So we have our greater than symbol here. So that makes our statement true here that 543 is greater than 368. And again, our greater gator is always going to eat the largest number, right friends? We talked about this. Would you guys like to do our uh, two goofy numbers chant? Okay, this always helps me to remember that no matter which way our arrow um, sort of symbol here is pointing, it's always going to be pointing to the biggest number. All right, ready? Two goofy numbers sitting in a tree, teasing greater gator, you can't catch me. Along came greater gator, hungry as can be, and snapped the biggest number right out of the tree. Nice job, friends. So hopefully you're feeling more comfortable in knowing that we go through these three steps every time we compare two numbers. We can look at it in all those different ways, in the same ways that we've been practicing these here, in um, breaking down the numbers and representing them in all these different ways, but we're always going to go through that same step. Okay, let's review one last time. First things first, start in the largest place. Second step, if the numbers are equal, Go to the next place. Third step, write your symbol to make the statement true. Nice job, friends. Let's go ahead and review comparing numbers with our base 10 blocks. And I always like this way because for me, I'm a very visual learner, meaning that it makes sense to my brain to be able to see these pictures of our base 10 blocks or even building them with actual base 10 blocks as well. So it might be helpful to, for you um, if you also feel like looking at pictures of things helps to give a better representation of the information for you so that you feel more confident in solving, then this is a great strategy for you to use. Maybe you like just looking at the numbers and comparing them as you go along. That's totally fine too. But again, we always like to give a lot of strategies in math because so many friends have different brains and ways of looking at things and things that make sense to their own brain. So we wanna kind of give you all these different strategies so that you can find what makes the most sense for you and then you can use that strategy to solve. All right, so we've got here 358 and it's broken down into hundreds, tens and ones. And then we have our base 10 blocks drawn right here underneath. So for three in the hundreds place, we have 100, 200, 300. Then under the five here, we've got our five tens because our five is in the tens space. So five tens, that would be five of these all together and each of them have 10 in them. So it would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then our ones are always just represented by those single little cubes and um, they just have the same value. So if that eight is in the ones, then it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ones. Same thing over here, two hundreds, four tens worth 40 and seven ones. So we always do first things first, start in the largest place. So looking at our hundreds, which is our largest place in a three digit number, I can see just right off the bat that there are more over here than there are here. So. 358 is greater than 247. And the same thing for this one goes down here as well. 
we can see 587, we've even underlined that largest place. So our brain right away goes to that first um, three, or the first digit in the three digit number, the hundreds place, and we can see the five. And so we've gotten five hundreds drawn right there. And looking at the other number, right off the bat, I can see that this first digit is a six. And I can see six hundreds drawn out right here. So before looking any further at the numbers, I know right away that 600 is greater than 500. So 587 is less than that cryptal uh, 672. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to your brain. Let's go ahead and review. Again, when we're making our hundreds, we start with our individual 10 ones. So let's break apart our 10 here. And then we'll sing our song as we put it back together. Okay, so we know that when you have 10 ones all on their own, okay, you've got 10 ones just like this. If I have any number like zero to nine, they can stay single, but as soon as you hit that 10, they shoop, transform into a 10. Okay, you ready to sing along with me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten ones makes ten. So you can see here, my ten ones are now, shoop, have transformed into a ten. Then once you have ten tens, the same thing happens again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten tens makes 100. If we want to know the value of the tens, then we skip count. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 ones. So one 100 is equal to or the same as 10 tens and 100 ones. 100 ones is the same value as 10 tens, let's do it again. All right, hopefully that is starting to really stick in your brain. You are feeling way super confident in being able to compare three digit numbers. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and practice our skill now by representing two three digit numbers. All right, so this is where I like you to follow along with me at home. So if you have a piece of paper or a dry erase board that you'd like to work on this with me, go ahead. I'd like you to write our first number. We're gonna write it in standard form or just regular old number form. Okay, our first number is 543. Let me see, what do you have, ready? Three, two, one. Yay, hopefully you had five, then four, then three. If not, no worries. That means you are stretching your brain and thank you for working so hard along with me. And you can switch your number to make sure it echoes mine. And then our other number that we're going to be looking at today is 548. Let me see, what do you guys think? What does it look like? You ready to show me? Okay, three, two, one. <gasps> Hopefully this is what you had, friends. 548 would have a five in the hundreds, a four in the tens, and an eight in the ones. All right, now let's break those down into our HTO charts. So maybe you are working on your HTO chart at home. Maybe you just put some lines in between your numbers. But if we are looking at 548, there you go, you can see better now. <laughs> what digit is in the hundreds place? You got it, friends. A five. Okay, so our five is in the hundred. What number is in our uh, tens place? What digit? Nailed it, friends. Four. And then what digit is in our ones place? You got it. It's our last digit. We've got five in the hundreds, four in the tens, and eight in the ones place. Okay, let's do the same for our other number, 543. Which digit is in the hundreds place? Nice job, friends. The four, or I'm sorry, the five. The five is in the hundreds place. I think I got a little ahead of myself. What digit is in the tens place? 
looking at 543, it would be the four. Then what digit is in the ones place? What number is left? You've got the five in the hundreds, the four in the tens. Which one would be in the ones? You got it, Ben. Denise said three. You are on the ball. Nice job. Now we get to do it with our model form or our base 10 blocks. So coming to this side here, what number is in the hundred place? Okay, what do you guys think? Yeah, we've got our five in the hundreds place. So how many hundreds do we have to draw? One. Two, three, four, and five. Nice job, friends. Look at all those five hundreds. Amazing. Now let's look at the tens place. How many do I need to draw? You're getting it, friends. Absolutely. There are four tens. We can see that because the four is in the tens place. So I drew four tens. I'm hoping that's what you drew at home too. Then, how many ones did you draw? Yep, eight little ones. Okay, so now since we're on um, model form, we're gonna go ahead and do that expanded form as well, which is essentially the same idea, but instead of drawing it out in pictures, we're writing the numbers for each that we just went over. So 500s is worth how much? Yep, 500. And 410s is worth how much? 10, 20, 30, 40. And eight ones is worth how much? Yeah, our ones is always gonna be the same value as the digit. So 500 plus 40 plus eight to show that when you add all of those values together, you get the value for 548. All right, let's do it for the other side here for 543, how many hundreds? You can be drawing this at home with me. We've got 100 and 200 and 300 and 400 and one more. We have 500 because a five is in the hundreds place. So we drew out 500 blocks. Then we have to draw out our tens. How many do we have here? If you drew out four, then you are on it. If you did not, no worries. Go ahead and draw out four tens. And then how many ones do we have to do? Which one is in the ones place? Okay, yep, just three little ones. Now we're gonna do the expanded form, which again is just sort of the number version of our model form that we drew out here. So if we have five hundreds, okay, then, how many, or what is our value of that hundreds place? If you said 500, then you are absolutely correct. If not, then go ahead and write 500 down now. Then our tens, 10, 20, 30, 40. And then our ones are three here. Right, so 500 plus 40 plus three gives us 543. They have the same value. All right, let's go ahead and practice our number form for 543. Go ahead and write it out. Okay, you had this written out here for 500 and then 43. Nice job, friends. Go ahead and do the word form on the other side here for 548. 500. 48. Nice job, friends. It is so good for us to practice word form as well, just so we feel super confident in all of those numbers and being able to write them out in word form. All right, so also let's look at our base 10 blocks. We've got 100, 200, 300, 400, 
540, and then I have eight little ones in here. Okay, here's all my eight in one side here, and then on the same on the other side, I've got 540, one, two, three, four, and three. All right, so now we know that when we want to compare three digit numbers, first things first, look in the largest place. So I looked here, I have a five here, and I have a five over here as well. So if we've got two of the same, then second step, if the numbers are equal, go to the next place. All right, so we gotta go to the next place, don't we friends? Because we've got five here and five here. So then I went to my 10 space. I've got four here. <gasps> I also have a four over here. So second step, if the numbers are equal, go to the next place. So I looked at my ones here is eight. And what is my ones over here? <gasps> you got it, only three. So we know that three is not quite the same as eight, right? Here's our three, here's our eight. Which one is bigger? Can you look and know without even having to count? You are so smart, friends. 548, eight is greater than three. So 548, our alligator chomps on that biggest number there. 848, or I'm sorry, 548 is greater than 543. You did so amazing with me this week, friends. You guys are so super smart. I really appreciate all of your hard work. You guys must be absolute pros at three digit numbers now. Hopefully this is feeling more comfortable for you. So thank you to all my friends at home. I love you. Thanks for your hard work. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.